Hello, I'm Guy, and this is Guy Robot. Hello, well, this was meant to be a really quick video that I was planning on doing. Unfortunately, this is the second time I've had to record it. So, this is about overclocking Xeons. I thought it'd be an interesting, really quick thing to do. A few people have expressed interest on my blog and in the comments here about what I've done to improve performance on my Xeon. And the truth is, when I originally got them, I tried using the AI overclock that comes with the Asus motherboard. It wouldn't even boot up, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to leave this. One of the reasons I've got Xeons and I've got ECC RAM is for stability. But since people are interested in it and I've got quite a unique system, I thought I'd give it a go. Did it work? Well, that's an interesting question. So the original video that I've got for this, um, I went through all of the different overclocking that I did. And we'll go quickly through the results. On the AI overclock at levels 1, 2 or 3, well, 2 and 3 the system wouldn't even turn on and 1 the system would often turn off before it even got as far as booting. So I played with manual settings ranging from changing my base clock from 100 to 105. 500 being the default. Now at 105 the system wouldn't even boot. At 100 which is the standard I get just about 2950 in Cinebench. Up to 103 I got to about 3150 so a 200 increase in my Cinebench score on it and then when I bumped up to 104 for my base clock which was putting me at roughly 2.2 gigahertz instead of 2.1 gigahertz on the chip I booted, I could run Cinebench, and I got through it twice, and on the third time the computer hung. It became really unstable. So I wound it back to a base clock of 103, and the system seemed pretty stable at 2.17 GHz. I did one of the Intel burns on it. I then ran Prime 95 for a full day. Everything was fine. Then yesterday, when I was playing back the video, I was playing it back, and I got to this section. Things have come on a lot, but not for server chips for obvious reasons. Is it's all about stability, etc., etc. And literally, the second I said stability, my whole computer shut down. Turns out it had decided that just doing a bit of playback on Premiere Pro was more taxing than everything else I've been doing. The thermals were okay. There was nothing particularly showing it was bad. It just appears that a day or so in, it was unstable, which led me to think whether or not this comment was correct. So, can you stably overclock a Xeon? Yes. On retrospect, I think I might have been wrong. So, where am I now? I'm rolled back to not having an overclock on the system. In reality, the best I managed to get from an overclock was, with stability-ish, 2.17 gigahertz. I managed to get up to 2.19 gigahertz with the uh, 104 base clock. Could I have made that stable enough to use it? Probably if I tweaked the voltages some more, potentially turned off ECC on my RAM, um, there would be some scope for that. But it comes down to this. Why do you want to overclock a Xeon? If you have a workload that needs a huge amount of per core resources, then a highly multi-core processor is not for you. I chose these processors because of virtualization tasks, because of a lot of parallel workloads. Um, that's the best reason for it. Now, there are some things that I wish were better at parallel workloads, like Premiere Pro encoding. It's rubbish. However, if you're going to do a lot of that stuff, you're probably better off buying, I don't know, a 6950 for a thousand pounds rather than spending a thousand pounds on Xeons. Because, okay, it's a thousand pound CPU, but you can stick that in a hundred pound motherboard and you're good to go. And then your RAM will cost half the price of ECC. So even with this, which is the really cheap ES chips, we're looking at a grand just on motherboard and CPUs without the difference of the ES chips. And I could have had. 10 core Skylake overclocked to four odd gigahertz, which would give me what 40 gigahertz minus all the cores, whereas this is 2.1 gigahertz with 28 cores. So it all depends how you want that workload spread out. Roughly pounds for gigahertz, you're probably going to be fairly similar. Can you overclock a Xeon? Yes. Could I have probably tweaked it further if I'd gone crazy on cooling and modifying voltage and everything? Yeah. Um, and there actually, I know some people who've said that they've got it stable at a base clock of 105, but 105 is probably the best you're going to get. Because the thing is, once you tweak the base clock, you're also tweaking the RAM speed, you're tweaking so many bits that are connected to that, that you end up having an unintended impact on it. And you need to make sure all the bits are working perfectly. With a dual Xeon system, you've got two processors to throw into the loop that need to be working in sync. And I think it just comes down to the fact that it's not a good idea. So... Can you overclock a Xeon? Yes. 
Can you overclock it by much? No. 5% is probably the best you're going to get, assuming you haven't got a multi-part unlock Xeon. Some of the 1XXX models, these, uh, are the E3s, the kind of really cheap low-end Xeons, those can be unlocked. This is an ES1, so it's probably unlocked, but I can't do um, multiplier overclocking in this motherboard because it's a workstation board. I've needed a consumer board, then I've only got one. The reality is, if you want to do overclocking, Xeons are not for you. If you want to have a good stable chip, particularly if you go for a spec like I've got set up that's crazy on some workloads, they're brilliant. Don't overclock your Xeon. Well, do it, but expect weird things to happen. Hopefully that convinced some of you not to overclock your Xeons, although I'm sure many of you will come up with multiple ways to do it. Uh, yeah, you can do it. I just don't think it's a wise idea. I'm not overclocking mine anymore. If you like this video, press like, otherwise hit dislike, and please leave your comments in the feedback below. Thanks. Can you stably overclock a Xeon? Yes.